Baker here in the Roadshow Kitchen this morning. Our friend Nick Raybar is going to spend the day before Thanksgiving with us. He's got a lot of work ahead. Uh, a lot to do today, A lot to do. Avenue N is the, is the restaurant located in Rumford. Just a great place. Apple fritters are what we're going to uh, put together. So, we're going to do apple fritters. I, I don't think I've ever had that before. Well, you're going to have it today. I'll have it today. And sure. they're going to be fabulous, I believe. I'm sure but they will But we're going to do a couple other things, yep. too, besides that. Because a lot of people have their meal plan set for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to come in here and say, let's do this or let's do that. I just want to give you a few little tweaks, okay. a few little tips that are really easy to do. Odds are you have some of these things in your cupboard. Yep. Um, so we're not only going to do the fritters, which are going to be beautiful, glazed with a little bit of spice to them, uh, but we're also going to make pan gravy. Okay. And we're also going to share a few tips to add a little texture and a little additional flavor to take the meal from here to here. Okay. So right now I have the broth simmering. Yep. Okay. So turkey is like when the turkey comes out, you take it off. And all the broth that's inside. All yeah. the broth that's inside. So yep. what you want to do is take the fat off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Reserve the broth. And then take all that great drippings that's on the bottom and then deglaze with a little bit of like, I use a little bit of like regular broth for that. Right. Like some, some pre-purchased chicken yeah. broth. And then deglaze the pan, scrape it off. And this is what you get. This is my renderings right now from the turkey that I roasted yesterday to have this ready to go for today. And I'm going to make a little roux, and I'm going to teach you a little trick to add a little bit of big flavor from herbs and fresh things to go into the stock as well. Okay. And then we're going to do the fritters. Got it. Okay, so the fritters are apples. beautiful Barton Farm apples, um, eggs, a little bit of flour, a little bit of my favorite ingredient in the world, Rumford baking powder. Of yes, course, it well. is. That's Pinch true. Pinch of salt, some great uh, spices like ginger, clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, um, a little bit of milk. Whisk it all together. We're going to fry them, and we're going to put a little uh, glaze on it as well. All right. Like so a sweet little sugar glaze. That was going to be sweet delicious. Something you can serve tomorrow for your Thanksgiving Day meal. We'll put it together. And also, Nick, you know what? Holidays are coming, too. Christmas is around the corner. He's got a lot of good things happening at Avenue N as well. Back Big to you. Time. We are back in the Roadshow Kitchen with Nick Ravar from Avenue N. Hey, and the pantry. If you're looking for a little grab and go, definitely head on over there. You said the pantry was really busy because people Holy were ordering Thanksgiving meals. They were Thanksgiving ordering meals. so much. We do Thanksgiving sides out of there, mm -hmm. and it was unbelievable. That's I nice can't tell you. Yeah, I think we did about 60 families this year. You're helping out a lot of people. I for try. The extra work. I try to make life a little easier, and hopefully these tricks make life a little easier mm -hmm. too. So tell us your first trick. You get a little roux going. This is roux. So roux is, you know, most people know roux, and it's a super old school. Um, you know, method of thickening like a broth mm -hmm. and to turn it from a broth to a gravy. So yeah. I like to make mine a little bit on the buttery side, not okay. so floury, not so clumpy. So just a little bit thicker than that. Mm -hmm. So adding a little bit at a time, just a little bit at a time to get it right. And then okay. if you cook it, it actually the darker the roux, it will actually add a little color into your uh, into gravy, gravy as well. Yeah. Yep. So over here, Mick, we have these um, these great spices, very okay. Thanksgiving uh, bay leaf and peppercorn rosemary. and thyme and rosemary. Mm. And I'm going to have you make like a little sack out of those. Okay. So this is a trick in case you, you're, you know, you're cooking for the masses and you need a lot of gravy. You yes. know, you don't, so sometimes just what you have in the pan might not be enough. So okay. you have to stretch it with like a little bit of store-bought broth or if mm -hmm. you make a little broth on the side, whatever the case may be. So doing a sachet like that. Can I tie it in a knot? Yeah, is please, that okay? tie it in a okay. knot. Yep. So doing a sachet like that is actually a great way. I'll do a triple knot. I triple don't want knot. any of them triple to leave. Knot. No, but see, that's the good thing is like you <laughs> want to get those herbs and all that flavor into okay. your broth. Oh, and then just pluck it in there. Put it right in. That was in a coffee filter? Tie it to your pot, just a little coffee filter, a cheesecloth, okay? And then you can let that simmer in there mm -hmm. while the stock simmers. And so you don't get all, like, the herb particles. Right, and all, then you're like, not fishing it out. You're not fishing it out, exactly. Okay. So once that goes for just a little bit. Easy. Yep, it's super easy. You're going to go into your roux with your stock. So... Stock into the roux. Stock into the roux. Uh, you stock. know, it really depends on how you like to do it. I like okay. to do it this way because I generally find that you can, uh, it avoids most of the lumps. Yeah. Those will all cook out. But you just keep... Some people like lumpy No, gravy. some people like lumpy but gravy. But you don't want these clumps. No, 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 no. Those are very clumps. So you see, every time you add and yeah. you whisk, the roux thickens. Mm -hmm. So you just keep adding and adding. And it does. It changes the color to a more gravy. Yeah, yes. yeah. You see how, how nice and dark that is because mm -hmm. we cooked that roux. We cooked that flour. Wow, it's, it's starting to smell real good, It too. starts to smell like real Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. um, and then while that, so we're going to put in our last little bit here. I like to make a roux for beef stew as well because sometimes you need a little thickening agent. So it, it, a roux is very versatile. It's very versatile. It works. You're right. It, it works mm -hmm. so well for a stew because stew, you need like a, a nice, rich, yeah, hearty broth, something to coat. Now, see how nice that looks? 
looks? That looks so good. All right, so I'm going to pass the mic to you. Okay. And have you do that. And I'm going to get back over here to the fritters, okay? All right. Because we still have a bit to do there. So in this bowl, I have a little bit of all-purpose flour, mm -hmm. a pinch of salt. I chopped up the apples, and I put in the baking powder. Okay, I'm going to have to hold you up for oh, there. No, for the sake oh, no. Oh, no. Get going. You can go ahead and crack some eggs I'm in there. I'm cracking eggs. But There's no stopping me. Don't drop them yet, because all right, I want right. to show you guys if at you home insist. how it works when we come back. Stick around. It does smell great yeah. in here, and actually, Nick's one of the guys who we're thankful for for spending the whole year with us all the oh, time. Stop it! Come, no, you really are, and coming in and making such great, great meals Thank for us you. all the time. And this is one of them: apple fritters. Well, I, I hope so. We're about to find out. <laughs> I'm thankful for you guys having me, the and for everybody on. watching. This is pressure. <laughs> so here's what we did. This is like your apple batter, yep. right? So I diced up some of those beautiful Barden Farm apples. Okay, I was going to call you out because I thought they were lumps. No, in, no, lumps no, in no, 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 no lumps, no, no lumps. lumps. No you lumps. see, we're, okay. we're lump free today. Um, a little egg, yep. a little milk, okay? And then um, flour, baking powder, which is what makes them light and airy. Yep. A little sugar, and then I put in some, some nice spices, like some autumn spices, okay. like ginger, cardamom, uh, nutmeg, yep. clove, cinnamon. And then we're just going to kind of drop these fritters now fritters are like a wild thing you know they they don't have to be like perfectly round you can just drop those in yeah no, you drop them in and let them get let them get frisky in there and you don't need any you know classic crazy pan to like a deep fryer to do this you have this this pan here yes 350 degree oil mm -hmm. so and um, that's really key too and you got to be really careful with you the, gotta with the be oil. careful this yeah. is like cooking at home in a, in, a, in a, anytime you're frying can be a little scary right so here's a few tips don't fill it to the top mm -hmm. all right make sure that you put just a tiny bit in to test it right before you commit to just going in with everything because otherwise if it's too hot it could it boil could over so be real careful when you're frying at home but i i don't want that to discourage you you know frying at home is a lot of fun and you know you can smell the apple coming off of these right now and some of those great autumn they spices. They look great. They are. They're fun. Look and they're, how nice they look. And then we're going to make a glaze for them, Will. So on the side, I have some, some sugar, like the powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. Now, powdered sugar goes away. So don't be afraid of having a, a decent lot. amount of powdered sugar compared to your milk. Yep. And then just a touch of whole milk. And that's going to just dissolve into, oh, does. into almost nothing. So it looks like this big, this big pile of of flour, but I mean of, of sugar. But it's dropping down. But really you quick. see how it just yeah. dissolves yeah. almost immediately. So let's not forget about our fritters. We'll so rotate them from time to time. And I love the wildness of that. Like, isn't that fun? That's crazy. You know, it's like fried dough. It doesn't have to be so perfect. It doesn't have to be so, um, you know, so official, so, so how round. Do you know when so, these are done? I mean, uh, well, I'm going to know when they're done because I've done these, you know, enough times. But I think that you want to give them about two minutes to three minutes on each side. All right. If your oil is at temperature, mm -hmm. and if you really want to know, just take one, let it cool, crack it open. Crack it open, see, okay. if, it's, see if it's Yeah, and the sometimes, they are, if, even if they look just slightly underdone, yep. just slightly underdone, if you let them rest, it almost finishes cooking. Okay, because the heat's still in. That's All right, so right. We're, we're gonna put this together, and we're gonna give these a try as well. Um, back to you. Looking for something to make tomorrow for Thanksgiving? How about apple fritters? Got them. Yes, Nick please. Raybar's here, Check. Avenue N is the restaurant. They're almost done. They're done. Look They're delicious. done. We're going to get them out of there right now. So I just finished whisking up that nice um, sugar glaze. Mm -hmm. And see the fritters, how they're like all wild and out mm -hmm. of control. I like it. Yeah, I do too. Wild and out of control fritters are, that's the way they're supposed to be. Nothing. Sounds like the theme on a Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah. yes. And, you Everyone's know, a little wild and out of control. That is, especially in my house, you can count on that. But see how, uh, see how they're like a little almost crispy, yep. you know? Mm. This is not a donut right you know right. that you want it to be super super soft fritters can be almost i don't want to use the word overcooked but cook longer than you would expect yeah okay, okay. and then we're going to put them on that that absorbent paper there to get mm -hmm. rid of some of that grease and then we're going to go right into that <gasps> oh. sugar glaze oh wow so we're going to go right into the sugar glaze so a little tip about sugar glaze is once you have it nice and glazed mm -hmm. Put it on a on a drying rack like this. Over a pan. Ah. Yeah. Put it on something like that because then that sugar glaze, and you should let them cool for a second too. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they're coming out of that oil. Yeah, they're coming out pretty hot, but they're still looking pretty darn good. Really good. Yeah, they're still looking pretty darn good. So 
We're going to finish these off. Okay. All right. Do you want me to toss some of those? Yeah, you okay. toss those. And then what we're going to do is talk about a few other tricks, too. So yeah, you, you saw the gravy, right? Yep. Got it. How nice that came out. So gravy came out great. And then I want to throw in a couple of these compound butters also, guys. So this one has pancetta, yes. a little bit of grain mustard, and a little bit of chive. Ooh, so yum. what I, see, if you've already got your sides done, you know, mm -hmm. when you're doing like um, Brussels sprouts, Yes. Or cauliflower. That's a great little savory addition to that. Wow. Mm. This that is cranberries and walnuts in a oh. compound butter. Mm. And that's great for like your squashes. So if oh, you're yeah. roasting um, butternut or you're roasting sweet potato or you're roasting um, sugar pumpkin yeah. and mm -hmm. you want to just add a touch of flavor, compound butters go far. That's a and great then, tip. Of, of course, for your sides, you know, Thanksgiving is generally like a soft, a lot of soft foods. Mm -hmm. So texture matters. <laughs> yep. So, you know, I've got the, the, the classic green bean casserole there. I didn't even know you had that I didn't in there. even know we had no, that in there. No, I'm sneaking either. a few last minute additions in, guys. And then I made my own crispy shallots, okay? Wow. So, nothing. Show off. Sh I, well, <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. You got to have a little fun. Now, texture is big. So, just to talk quickly about texture, crispy shallots work really well for this. Works really well for broccoli casserole also, uh -huh. or any of your like creamed vegetables, creamed onions, or whatever. So that's a spectacular little addition. Mm -hmm. um, and then breadcrumbs also. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking yeah. to add a little bit of flavor um, uh, and a little bit of texture, breadcrumbs work well. So instead of just putting like dry breadcrumbs on there, mm -hmm. right, melt a little butter, maybe put them in a the food processor and blend it up. It'll make them a lot Ooh. coarser, so you don't like. <gasps> Breathe in right. the breadcrumbs, yes. you know. Start choking on them. Right, start choking yeah. on them. So how about these fritters too? Those look so delicious. So we made a lot of stuff here today. It's a busy day. It's a busy day. The Those pan gravy. Awesome. Don't forget the little sachet that you made mm -hmm. earlier. Adds a lot of great flavor into the broth. It looks and then so the roux is so nice. And these are glazed up really, really beautifully. They look delicious. They really, look really so, so good. It really Nick, thanks does. So, so much Yum. for coming out, guys. You have thanks so much. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Nick. you. I love you guys. And happy Thanksgiving.